morning, guests. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'm excited to be this club's new president for the coming year. And I have to tell you a little bit about my journey. Oh, yeah. I've been a Toastmaster for 14 years. And like many of you who are in the room, I joined because I just had a fear of speaking. I had just started a company and I wanted to build my confidence. I wanted to speak intelligently to mm -hmm. clients. I wanted to do presentations in front of my peers. Does any of that sound familiar to any of you? <laughs> in my 14 years, I realized there are actually three parts to the Toastmaster journey, and that's what we're going to talk about today. The first part really applies more to our guests and our very new members. You seek Toastmasters because of this, the items I just shared with you. You want to, you think that you have a fear of public speaking. You want to overcome something. You want to fine tune your skills. And that's why you seek Toastmasters and you join. And that's okay. That's exactly where you need to be. This is part of the Toastmaster journey. That's why I love Toastmasters. It provided an outlet for me to have these experiences. And the goal of this club is to provide that safe haven for you to have those experiences. In these beginning months and or a year, whatever, whatever it takes, the goal of this club is to make you feel welcome, to encourage you, and to provide a safe place for you to test out your skills. Here's one thing that I know. You already have these skills. The second part of the journey is, I would call it the coasting part. <laughs> you've been at Toastmasters a few months, you've given a few speeches, you determine how many that is, and you're like, you know what, I got this. I'm down with this. Oh yeah, I'm scheduled for a speech, I can do this. The topics come a little bit easier, the jitters seem to go away a little bit more, and you give your speeches. This could be an exciting part of Toastmasters, or it could be a complacent part of Toastmasters. I've had members come to me and say, you know what? I've learned all I can learn. <laughs> I don't think this is doing it for me anymore. And I become sad. Life that we are given is an opportunity to learn. We start learning as infants and I challenge every single person in the room to sit with somebody 90 years or older and ask them if they are still learning on a daily basis. We have a propensity to learn. And again, this is the environment that should be created inside the club. I hope that every meeting you attend in the coming year, you will learn something. If not, we need to improve on that. I hope nobody ever feels complacent in their Toastmaster journey. I can tell you that I did. And there's a few tips and tricks that I can help you with that. But let's get to our third part of the Toastmaster journey. This is after you, after you start, after you go through your coasting stage, and now you have the confidence. But here's what you see. How does that apply to me? Right? Because it's all about what's in it for me. That's why you joined. It's about what's in it for me. The next level of Toastmasters has to do more with what can you do for somebody else. Like, I think it was Reed that said, there's been a lot of new, a lot of changes. Actually, it was Myra. She recognized a lot of faces and she saw a lot of new faces. We've had 15 new members join our club in the last year. And I can tell you that they're not all here. But here's the opportunity that's presented to you. As you reach to this next level in Toastmasters, it now becomes part of your Toastmaster journey, which in my opinion is the leadership track, where you now begin mentoring others. Every new member who comes in has the jitters. Every new member is unsure of themselves. Wouldn't it be great if they were teamed up with somebody that says, you know what, you got this. And then show them 
provide them a roadmap on just how to do it. These are the three sections of Toastmasters. It's okay to be in any one of these sections. They are all perfectly acceptable. And in fact, that is what this club is made of. All three sections. I'm grateful to have gone through the jitters, the beginning Toastmaster. I'm grateful to have experienced it because without it, I wouldn't have anything to share with somebody who is new without being in their shoes. I'm encouraged every week when I come in and I hear guests say, oh, I just want to fine tune my public spe speaking skills. I, I am afraid to stand in front of my peers or I don't want to fall over or whatever their reason is. I'm like, you know what, you're in the right place. I would urge you that if you ever feel that moment of complacency to come to one of us who have more experience that are in the mentoring mode because there is another part of the journey that will be equally, if not more, fulfilling. Think about it. When you first started driving a car, I don't know if you were scared, but you were definitely like, I don't know what I'm doing, and you had to think about every single move. How many times do you drive home from work or wherever your destination is, and you're going home, and it's almost like it's automatic pilot. You're like, whoa, you turn your corner to your street, and I'm like, how did I get here already? It just becomes second nature. And that's okay, this is the final part of Toastmasters. But you have an opportunity to share that wisdom with others. And what I see in the ring today is a lot of new people, a lot of people who don't have the confidence yet. They don't have, they have the mindset that, that they can't do something. One of the things I used to say is if you think you can, and you think you can't, you are correct. My goal with this club as your president is to be that source of encouragement. I ask you to walk with me. 